Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. It's Monday. I'm back with a fantastic guest from uh, France, from my uh, home country. Uh, welcome, Dorella Yepan. Welcome, Dorella. I know it's uh, your uh, second time here on uh, on the talk show, and uh, I'm uh, so happy to uh, to have you. And uh, so, uh, before we start with our secrets. I want to introduce Dorella. So Dorella Yepan is originally from Romania and uh, she lives in France, as I said to you. She's happily married and has two kids, uh, a girl and a boy. She loves nature walks and spending time with her family. Although she studied economics, uh, she decided to convert to therapy. She took a leap of faith and transformed a passion of helping people into a career. For her, it's a hobby and she feels empowered every time she sees a client shifting their lives. She speaks several languages, Romanian, French, English, and Italian, and therefore she's been able to accompany clients worldwide. She strongly believes that we all deserve to be happy and have an amazing life. So that's why every day she tries to uh, uh, help people reach their goals. She has written a book, a 28 days program on relationship, which will eventually be published in five languages. So look out for it. Romanian, English, French, Italian, and Spanish. And today she's going to give us five secrets of perfect couples. So uh, welcome Dorella, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you back. And um, come on, tell, tell us uh, your secrets. <laughs> Hello, Isabel. Thank you so much for having me here. I am uh, very honored to be here with you because I really appreciate everything that you do. We, were, we are going to talk about five secrets. Uh, maybe there are more, maybe there are less, but we have to start from somewhere. And uh, let's get to the point because uh, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, what's uh, the most important a secret, uh, it's self-love. Because when we are in a relationship, uh, we tend to forget about ourselves. This is not only for women, it is also for men. And it's not the narcissism or to look only for oneself. It's very important to understand what self-love means. Uh, it means that I love myself, I know how to say no, I know when I am hurt, when someone is hurting me on purpose maybe, so I have to react somehow and say, I love myself. Would I want my daughter to suffer like I suffer? You know, it's a question that we can ask ourselves and then we, if the answer is, oh my God, I wouldn't want another person to suffer like this. That's a bell ringing saying, oh my God, you have to do something. Mm -hmm. So this is the negative side. On the positive side, when there is self-love, uh, I'm taking care of myself, of my body. My body is my home on this planet, in this life. So if I don't take care of it, it will break eventually. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking care of what I eat, what I exercise, I read because my mind also needs exercise. I give myself time. This means time for myself. And the more I love myself, the more I will be loved in my relationship. What do you think about this? How, how did you feel this in your life? I, I totally agree with you. And um, it took me a while to uh, realize that, but that's, uh, that's what I do. And that's what I advise uh, my clients as well. So uh, to uh, love themselves, uh, because when you love yourself, it's like um, you, you show that you are so happy that you attract the right person or the right people around you. And, uh, and things are so easy, you know, it's just like, and it's respect, it's honoring oneself as well. Yeah, it's very important. So this is the first secret. When okay. we love ourselves, we begin to see that we enter the right relationship. The second secret is gratitude. So I see people 
they don't stop whining about everything that happened in their life. It's like everything is a disaster. There is no good in their lives and they never appreciate anything. It's like, uh, I don't know, we're not at war as some other people are. So instead of feeling gratitude for what we have, they forget to feel that gratitude. And uh, we, we will go further on this, but I would like to say that our thoughts create our reality. True. So when there is this lack of gratitude, what we create is exactly what we're thinking about. Instead of creating something amazing, we create something that will give us the chance to continue to be uh, not happy at all. And complain. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And uh, when we begin to feel gratitude, we open a door to a new life. So people might ask, I'm not happy in my life. Why should I feel gratitude? I myself uh, took this process and I would uh, advise people to try it themselves. I wanted to, so you said about me that I am very happily married. I am. But uh, in the past, I wanted to divorce from my husband. And I was sure that my relationship cannot be better in this life. And someone told me, listen, write 10 reasons of gratitude every day. And I said, you know, there is nothing to be grateful for my husband. And she said, my friend said, yes, there is. He comes home at night, he plays with the kids, he brushes his teeth. You know, you can find many reasons of some small things that you can be grateful for. And I've done this for one month. And by the end of that month, I was feeling uh, my feelings changing. Instead of being... Um, of complaining all the time, I began to see that I'm calm, I'm happier, and I like my husband. <laughs> <laughs> so um, gratitude can completely change your life. People know that even if in a wonderful relationship, when they begin to practice the, this conscious gratitude, they begin to see that things become even better. Mm -hmm. So if it's not good, practice for what you want. If it is good, you will see that it becomes better. I want to give one last example for this gratitude. For instance, when you want to change your car, if you don't have gratitude for the car that you mm -hmm. already have, you won't have the car that you want. Okay, so if I feel gratitude, I won't be able to change my car because I am already grateful for the car that I have. That's not the point. The feeling inside is that I am happy for what I have and I am open to receiving more. So this will bring easier and faster something that you want. So feeling gratitude for the fact that you're alive, that you breathe, that you eat, that you have a roof, that you have hot water, that you have a car, a phone, internet connection, because you're watching this, will bring you the things that you want. And I would like to give an extra tip for this gratitude thing. You can put set an intention. So before saying what you are grateful for, put an intention. Uh, I want my relationship to get better. I want to meet my partner. So things that you want in your life. And then think of the, think of the things that you're grateful for. It would be great to write down what you are grateful for. And if you take this habit to do it every day, you will begin to see how people change in your life how your partner will appear at some 
moment, mm -hmm. at the right moment, out of the blue. And he will be like the perfect guy. <laughs> do you do it in the morning or at night? Both. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I do it in the morning, uh, just when I wake up. Uh, you can do it in the evening when you go to sleep. But there are people who don't have the time in the morning or at night. If you don't have the time, do it whenever it's good for you. Uh, it's great to do it when you get up or when you go to sleep because your brain shifts into another phase and it's more open to receive all those feelings of, of gratitude. But what I advise my clients, it's better to do it than not to do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, gratitude is important and it's true because we always look at the, well, we tend to look at the negative side, what I, I don't have, but what do you have? I mean, look and, uh, and by um, being grateful as well, as you say, we, we attract because our energy has shifted, right? So we, we will be attracting what we want. Uh, and it will arrive, as you say, at the right moment. Yeah, at the perfect moment. <laughs> so first secret, self-love. Second secret, gratitude. Third secret, put yourself in the other person's shoes. That's not easy. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is a hard one. And it's not to complain a little bit more. It's like you have an argument with someone, but that person thinks they're right. So if I am Isabel now, and Isabel is Dorella in this moment, I will try to see what does Dorella want to say me as Isabel? Mm -hmm. Can I understand her? Can I understand what she sees in that situation mm -hmm. where I'm feeling that I, someone is not understanding me? I had a cl client um, just the other day and she told me about her husband who is um, yelling at her. And I said, you know, that is the message that he feels that he is not loved. It's difficult to go and say, you know, I love you. Let me give you a hug. And the other person is yelling at you. So I don't say you have to do that. But just think in your mind that when that person has um, does something that hurts you, it's just the mirror that they are being hurt and they need your attention. We mm -hmm. see that in children. If a child doesn't receive positive attention, he will look for negative attention. And they will be happy when they receive negative attention because that means that mom and dad are there for them. They're seeing them and they yeah. didn't see him or her when they were good, but now they see them and they feel that they are being loved. So we can stop that by putting ourselves in the other person's shoes and try to look with a different perspective at all the situation. Yeah, it's Did true. Did you try to do this? Yes, yes, yes. It's, uh, it, it's hard because as you say, we tend to think that we are always right. <laughs> So, uh, and uh, to change the, uh, the angle and just like, okay, I'm going to put myself in their shoes. So if they react like that, what are they feeling? What is the message behind it? Yeah, we, we, we tend to get out of the reaction and it's like, I am feeling, understanding, and acting, not reacting, because you mm -hmm. have that reaction, we don't have to react. And this can help us to stop the fights in the couple, the arguments, and mm -hmm. people begin to say, oh my God, I'm, I'm understood in my relationship. Yes, yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, yeah. Put yourself in uh, other people's shoes uh, just to identify what triggers them. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do profiling, but uh, people react differently to say similar words. So uh, if someone gets triggered but by you didn't do that, you have to stop telling them that thing. I don't get mad at this, so it's not a trigger for me. So mm. we can pay attention when when we are in someone else's shoes, we can understand better what's the trigger in the relationship and we can understand how to better engage in the situation. Okay, right, that's the third one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so first one, I will repeat them all each time because I feel it's very important for people to get them all. Yeah. First secret, self-love. Second secret, gratitude. Third secret, put yourself in the other person's shoes. Fourth secret, pay attention to others. This is something really interesting because apparently it has nothing to do with our relationship. So I will explain it and then I will ask what you think about this. In uh, relationships, usually it's the woman, but sometimes it's the other way around. The woman wants to spend time with her partner. And when they stop spending time together, she's like, oh my God, he's not loving me. We have to spend more time together. And she doesn't stop to ask for more attention from her husband partner. But the thing is that they need a little bit of space. They both need to have things that they don't do together. I agree. He, uh, the men usually need time for themselves. For women, it's difficult to understand that. We won't get into the whole story or what's behind this pay attention to others, but I will explain something like this. The more careful I am with the needs of people around me, the more careful my partner will be. So if uh, my kid is asking me for something and I'm like, I don't have time for me, you do it on yourself. I will discover that my partner is like, I don't have time. You can do it on yourself. If um, a colleague at work needs some help from me, and then like, I cannot help you. I have my own work. Well, I get at home and my husband will say, I don't have the time. I'm sorry, I'm really busy. The other way around, I'm like, Isabel, can I help you with something? Do you need help with something? Or I am paying attention. I've heard you say that you need to do something. You don't know how to do it. And I know how to help you. And I will say, I can help you with that. So I'm there for you. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I'm getting away from my husband. But actually, what's happening is that the more people I help around me with the things that, that they need, the more attentive my partner will become. So please tell me, what do you think about this secret? Um, first, we were talking about space, and I totally agree. Uh, for me, a relationship is like three different steps or three different people, I would say, like the, part, the, the, the man, the woman, and the, the, the relationship. So doing things together, that's fine, but to allow as well to have time separately uh, because we need our own space. I mean, we sometimes we don't even like the same things. Don't get me wrong, I don't like football. And some men really like football, need to be like uh, in a group of men to play, to just like, so that's fine. Why other women just will meet with, uh, with their friends. So that, that's why I totally agree with that. As for um, helping others, uh, that's, I think it's like the reciprocity. When you actually help others, things around you will shift. 
So, uh, and uh, one thing as well, I, uh, I used to do and I don't do anymore. I used to anticipate my partner or, uh, or my friend's needs. Now I listen and I ask if they need help, right? I don't do it. And, uh, and I realize that it gives them the, um, well, the space as well to say yes or no. Um, but that was just like a way to respect their space, their view on things and just say, okay, well, thank you for asking, but I want to do it myself or I haven't had a chance to do it now, but I will eventually, but thank you. So it's a combination of respect, space, and being there for them. Yeah, that, that's a combination of all of them. As I said in the beginning, you know, maybe it's only one secret or maybe there are many more. <laughs> but the thing is that we have to start from somewhere. And mm -hmm. here we have five that will help us a lot. And uh, I really can say that I have done all of them. So first secret is self-love. <laughs> Second secret is gratitude. Third secret is to put yourself in other people's shoes. Fourth secret is to pay attention to others. And the fifth secret is the emotion code. I am saying it like this, but I want to develop it. Uh, the thing is that... <sighs> I've met many people in toxic relationships and they don't know how to get out of them. They don't understand how they got stuck in those relationships and they don't know what to do to get out of them. And um, I said the emotion code because it's the easiest technique that I know that's really involving the body, the mind, the spirits, the emotions, and it's fast and easy. And what it does, it releases the trapped emotions that are inside our body. Mm -hmm. So what's this, what, what's the connection with the perfect relationship? Well, the thing is that as long as I have trapped emotions in my body, I won't be able to live my, to live my life as fully as I am destined to live it. And the more emotions I release, the more changes I see in my life. It's like the partner is opening their souls to discuss, to have that connection from soul to soul. Uh, relationships that are uh, distance, they come back together. So even people that weren't, they thought they cannot be together anymore, as it was in my case, everything shifts around and it transforms in something really amazing. Good, yeah. Well, yeah, it's just um, communication as well. When you don't communicate, well, you guess what people think and you might be totally out. So... This is not even to discuss anything, you know, it's like you go for a session of emotion code release yeah. and it's like you have the practitioner, you say, okay, so I feel stuck in my relationship. I, I, I feel I cannot communicate. I feel I don't love the person anymore. I feel there is some blockage that's not allowing me to have a better relationship. And then uh, it, we, we go and find the trapped emotions, we release them. And then it's like, I don't feel the same, you know? It's like, I have some, some clients of mine are like, uh, they come with something and they have to give a rate from zero to 10. It's like, okay, it's a eight when they began. Uh, and at the end, by the end, they're like, why did we work in, on this? Because I, I feel no connection with this problem. <laughs> but you start with an eight out of 10, you know? It's like, it's really huge. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, so releasing the trapped emotions really helps to go for that perfect relation that we dream of, that we really want, and that we can uh, be happy about. Because mm -hmm. that's the point. We want to be happy in our lives. As you said in the beginning, I think that we all deserve to have 
happy lives, to live happy experiences, amazing experiences. And when we have trapped emotions, it's like, I don't have the courage. I don't think I deserve it. Oh, it's okay, a relationship like this, because it's. I'm afraid that I will have something worse if I get out of this one. But actually, no, this one can become amazing or the next one can be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we, we've got uh, trapped emotions, um, they become blocks. And sometimes it's unconscious. You don't even know that you've got that. And uh, and and yeah, it's uh, it's good to um, get rid of those emotion to be able to uh, to see uh, the biggest the bigger picture, you know. So uh, it's uh, yeah, so emotional code. So uh, yeah, so that's the technique you uh, you apply <laughs> to your clients. One of, one, one. one of the techniques, uh, but it's really changing lives. So people are like, uh, I want more. <laughs> good. That's good. That's fantastic. So, uh, and do you have any examples of uh, your clients, for example, uh, like what type of emotion they, they had and you managed to get rid? The thing is that on the emotion code, so when I use this technique, uh, the process is very simple because you have... Uh, a uh, table of 60 emotions that are in columns and in rows and you look for the name of the emotion you identify the type of the emotion so you have like personal emotions inherited emotions mm -hmm. prenatal emotions and three more but we won't get in all of them today and it's like did i inherit this emotion was it mine from the beginning so it's like you have inherited emotions maybe from your mother and it's been through 100 generations and you're like oh my god 100 generations and they were all suffering from this trapped emotion and um, you identify the emotions then you release them and then you feel like everything changes it's like you're like stones are getting out of your back and you yeah, feel, you feel lighter. lighter you feel lighter yeah. yeah and it's something really amazing that people uh, can uh, feel that and uh, you ask me if there is something particular i had an emotion code session a group session because i do group sessions also and we had only trapped emotions that were personal or inherited from the mother no emotion inherited from the father so in that emotion code session there were only mom and our ours in our emotions and it was weird but that's what happened in that session and uh, it's like the emotions that are connected with what we want to work on will get out will be released and I like something I, I have read in, the, in a book. It's like these trapped emotions, they really want to get out of our bodies, maybe even more than we want to get rid of them. Okay. And it's like, we just have to have the courage to go see a practitioner. Maybe it's not the emotion code, maybe it's some kind of other therapy, but just go see someone and get it out because you will feel the changes immediately and you will be able to practice the four steps that I have said <laughs> in the beginning. So it's like, uh, do the necessary steps so that you can have the relationship that you really dream of because you can have it. That's great. That's, um, yeah. And, and usually it comes from the mum because, well, we're close to our mums usually and um, the mum is there to, uh, uh, to look after the, uh, the, the kids. And so, uh, yeah, I can, I can relate to that, definitely. No, um, uh, you, you nope. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, there you got me on something so uh, i had a client i knew nothing about uh, that part of her life 
and I'm working on her. I'm beginning to release emotions, and almost all of them were inherited from her from her father. Oh wow! And she starts crying because this helps with the release. And uh, we work, and by the end, she tells me, you know, actually, <clears throat> my father is not my father. I was raised by a stepfather. And I always worked on my on, on my relationship with my mom, and I considered that I have nothing to work on my mm -hmm. father's side because mm -hmm. he didn't raise me. So the thing was amazing because she really worked on the relationship with her mom, and all the trapped emotions were from her dad. So it's like I knew nothing about that, but the emotion coach revealed that yes we, she had to work on the relationship with her father mm. so yeah oh, interesting yeah. interesting <laughs> fantastic well mm, yeah and yeah without with the emotions being trapped we we get not paralyzed but at least we hold back on a lot of things so uh, we we need to get rid of them you know, you, you said a wonderful word. Thank you for choosing that word. Because uh, emotions that are trapped in our body, we understand that we have them. Uh, if we have health issues, relationship problems, money problems, career problems. So basically, if your life is not perfect for everything, so if you have nothing to complain of, if you have nothing to complain of, your life is perfect. And this means maybe you have no trapped emotions or the trapped emotions that you do have are not impacting your life. Yes. If you have any problem at all, go release your trapped emotions and begin to feel the difference in your life. Wow. So that's it. So you've given us five secrets. I know you've got more. So I invite my audience to uh, contact you for the uh, for the others. Because <laughs> yes, I know that uh, Dorella has got uh, more secrets to uh, to give us. But today she uh, she said, oh, I'm going to give five and the rest you can come to me and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll be happy to uh, to tell you but and I know as well you've got a book tell us about the book yeah I am so proud because it's uh, already available in English in the beginning it was written in Romanian but it's already available in English on Amazon you can buy it also in paperback so no need to read on Kindle if you want if you prefer the book uh, in your hands it's uh, as you said in the beginning it's a 28 day program to have the perfect relationship i called it in english and they live happily ever after uh, i don't know if it's a good title or not but i was like i really want to give you what is inside the book and to understand how amazing it can be for you to live your life um, putting into action all the steps i am offering in the book because um, you can manifest uh, the relationship that you dream of. I have already said that today, but it's really important to understand that you can create the relationship that you want. It's like um, you have maybe never heard this before, or maybe you have heard it before, but you didn't have the tools on how to work with it because you can say oh daily affirmations i will say affirmations uh, every day uh, positive affirmation but by the end of one year you have nothing and you're like this work is not working why why don't i have what i want so here you have okay you have the positive affirmation you can work with that uh, the statement you can say it every single day it's perfect but what's underneath mm that you're saying today. So it's a full program uh, you have on Kindle, on uh, paperback. So I'm really um, waiting for you to read it, to tell me how you like it, and maybe to talk together and see how your lives change after reading this book. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure it will have an impact. And I've got your book, so uh, I'm, I'm going to read it. So uh, thank you very much, Dorella. And I know you've got an offer for our audience. 
Yes, I, I will uh, set a sale for the persons who are interested uh, for the emotion code session. Uh, this is a 20 minute session. I really insist on the fact that it's not a therapy session. This is the amazing thing about releasing trapped emotions because we don't have to do any therapy. It's just the releasing of the, the trapped emotions. So I will put a link where you can schedule um, your appointment and uh, we can meet and I can help you with uh, what you need from me. And I would be delighted to help you with this. Well, thank you very much, um, Dorella. So um, thank you ever so much talking about the secrets of uh, a great relationship and perfect couples. Um, and uh, you're coming back anytime, you know that. So uh, and uh, so next week, uh, uh, I will be uh, inviting Cassandre Leon. She's uh, based in Martinique. So you see, we are moving from the mainland in France to uh, the islands. And uh, she's going to talk about self-esteem. So um, that's going to be uh, an interesting topic as well. Uh, obviously, if you've missed the previous talk shows, don't worry, just click on YouTube, uh, look for uh, Phoenix Coaching and Training, subscribe, click on that little bell to get the notifications. And uh, once again, thank you, Dorella. Thank you, the audience, for being here. And uh, I'll see you next Monday. And uh, thank you very much, Dorella. Thank <laughs> you so much, Isabel. Bye-bye.